Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you an example of how you can utilize Excel or Google Sheets to quickly create accurate bar graphs. Let's dive in. I created this Google Sheet with some data that I found. This data shows how many babies were named Emily between 1970 and 2018. I got this data through a quick Google search and I copied it over to Sheets. I'll link the file below if you want to follow along, but feel free to create your own Excel sheet using your own data. The format for this is important though. Your data has to be confined to columns, so you can't have a row header like this example. This first cell cannot be blank or you won't be able to import the file into After Effects. So you see in my sheet I have two columns, with a header for the year and one for the amount of babies named Emily per million. Once your sheet is all set up with your data, you have to save or download as a CSV file which stands for comma separated values. Essentially what this does is it makes the data you entered readable to your computer. So as plain text, it looks like this. This is what After Effects will be able to read. You can see my columns are separated by commas. Now you can just click and drag the CSV file into After Effects. I made a new After Effects comp that's just 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second, around 10 seconds long. If I drag this file into my timeline, you could see the columns that I listed here, the year and babies per million. So that means that After Effects can read my file and I'm gonna delete this from my comp because I don't actually need it in my timeline. Before I start, I wanna write out my goals for this project. I wanna make an accurate bar graph using the values in my CSV file, but I also wanna make it customizable in case I wanna easily edit it later. I know that I wanna be able to adjust the width of my bars. I want to control the spacing between each bar. And lastly, I want to add a color picker so I can change the color of my bars later. So to do all this, let's make a new adjustment layer by right clicking on my timeline, new adjustment layer. And let's add some controllers into its effects panel. So in effects and presets, just search control and then click and drag two slider controls and one color control. If at any point you don't see a panel I'm working on, make sure to go to Window and then find the panel that you need in this selection. Right now we're working in Effects and Presets. This is where I'm getting the controls from. You can also go to Window, Workspace, and then click Animation. This is the workspace that I'm currently working in. Workspaces will automatically set your panels up in a certain way, so I'm using the Animation Workspace right now. Okay, now let's rename these controls. So if I just click on them to highlight it and then hit enter, I can just rename them bar width, spacing, and I'll leave this one as color control. So let's lock this effects panel so you can reference it later. Now I'm going to make another comp called bars. This is where, you guessed it, the bars of my graph are going to live. I'm putting them in their own comp because I have a lot of data and it's going to be a lot of layers. So for writing expressions, it's going to be a lot cleaner if it's in its own composition. My bar comp is the same size as my main comp. In my bars comp, I'm going to add a rectangle, and this is what I'm going to build on to make my bar graph. I'm going to code everything I need into this one rectangle, and it's going to make this process super quick and easy. So first, I'll open my align panel, and I'll center this shape, and I'm also going to center the anchor point by pressing Control or Command if you're on a Mac, while double-clicking the Anchor Point tool. Okay, let's open the Rectangle Path Size. And you can see my shape's X and Y value. If I unlink this, you can see how it affects the shape. But I want my X value, the width, to be adjustable by the slider, and my Y value, the height of the bar, to represent my data. This requires some code. Let me walk you through the basics of building this expression out because I really want you to understand what you're typing so you can do this on your own projects. Alt click on the stopwatch to start writing your expression. So these two numbers are represented in the expression by x, comma, y in brackets. So when I put these two values in brackets like this, After Effects knows that the first value is x and the second value is y. I know I want my x value to be this adjustable number from the slider, so let's type x equals and then pick whip to the slider. Make sure there's a semicolon at the end. I'll set Y to 100 for now. 
Now this isn't defining x or y yet, it's this bracket at the end that's making the expression say that this value is x and this value is y. We're basically giving a nickname to the slider control for After Effects to reference later. So instead of calling this x, we can call this cats. And instead of y, I can call it dogs. And then when I replace x and y in my brackets here with cats and dogs, it'll still work. I'll change this back to x and y though. Okay, so you see the height of my bar is pinned to 100 pixels. And if I move this slider, the width of my bar is adjustable. So this is perfect. Now let's link the Y value to our data. Go back into your project panel, and then we're gonna delete this 100 that we wrote as our placeholder. And then just pick whip to the CSV file. If I click out of this now, we're gonna get an error. After Effects doesn't know what to do with this file. We have to tell it exactly what to pull from this data set. So after this file name, I'm gonna put a period and then data value, parentheses, and then a bracket. In the bracket, we're going to reference the column and then the row of our data. So computers start counting at zero, not one. So that means the first column, which has my years, that's column zero. I want these bars to represent my second column, which is column one. It's important to note that it will count the first row as a header, not as data. So row zero is actually row two. So let me show you what happens if I put one comma zero, which is column one, row zero. You can see my Y value is the same as the value in my data set in the first row, so it worked. There's a problem though. If I wanna make 50 of these bars, I have to go in and change every single code for each bar, and that's tedious and annoying and not efficient at all. So instead, I'm gonna utilize the index number of my layer. The index number is located next to the source name here, and an index number is assigned to every new layer. Remember how computers start counting at zero? Our index number will always start with one. So I'm gonna make a new value above my other values called true index. And again, you can name this whatever you want, but I'm calling this true index. And I'm gonna set it equal to index minus one, and then a semicolon at the end. So this makes the index of my layer here zero, which will reference the first row of my sheet. So now, instead of one comma zero in my data value reference, I'm gonna put one to reference the first column of my data points, comma, my true index value that I created. And watch what it does when I duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna duplicate by pressing Control or Command if you're on a Mac, plus D. So layer one is referencing column one, row zero, but layer two is referencing column one, row one. And if I keep copying this, it's gonna keep going until I reach the end of all the data that I have. But we're not done adding code to this, so I'll delete it for now. I'm also going to divide my Y value by 20 because it's not gonna fit on my comp otherwise. So I just did this by typing backslash and then 20 to divide that. You might not have to do this for your data set, and that's totally fine. So now, whenever I copy this layer using Control D, it automatically adjusts in height, but I still have to adjust the position every time, and that's annoying and tedious too. So I'm gonna add an expression to my position on my shape layer. So click the layer, and then hit P on your keyboard to open position. Now, with position, you can write an expression just like we did with the size layer for the X and the Y, but with this property, you can actually just right click it and click separate dimensions. So now we just need to write an expression for the X value. So alt click the X position, pick whip to the spacing slider, and then we're gonna multiply this, so write an asterisk here, by our index. So now every time I make a new layer, the spacing will be even and auto adjust. Right now it's at zero, but let's set it to something like 33 and you can see it shift. Okay, so last is changing the color control and that's just going into my fill, finding the color and then pick whipping to the color control, super easy. Now let's duplicate it until it matches the amount of data points that I have And you can see that everything is center aligned, so I'm gonna go and select everything 
and align to the bottom edge of the selection. I'm also going to move my anchor points to the bottom edge of my bar. I'm using a plugin called Move Anchor Points. It's a pretty cheap plugin and I highly suggest purchasing this. It's super handy for situations just like this. So now that my anchor points are at the bottom of my bars, I'm going to open scale by clicking S and then I'm going to animate the Y scale only. So I have to unlink this property. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go and just copy and paste my scale keyframes to the rest of my layers, making sure my playhead is on that first keyframe so that everything is aligned. Okay, looks good. So let's go back to our main comp and drag the bars layer into it. I'm going to make some adjustments so that it fits in my comp a little better. Okay, looks good to me. So I'm gonna add also a solid background while I'm here. So I just right click, new, solid, and then I'm gonna go with something like this. So we have our bars set up and it's looking good. So now I wanna add labels to each bar and the process will seem pretty similar. So start by adding a text layer and write something random here as a placeholder. I'm just gonna write out number. And then I'm gonna rotate my text by negative 90 degrees and place it on my first bar just to see how the size looks. So I'm looking to see that the width of the bar is the same as my text. It's okay that the placeholder text is overlapping here as long as the width of my rotated text is inside my bar graphic. So my sample text is placed around where I want it, so I'm going to pre-comp this and call it numbers. Let's open this numbers pre-comp. Go into the source text for this layer and alt click the stopwatch. I'm gonna put in that true index value again, so true index equals index minus one with a semicolon at the end. Then I'm gonna reference my sheet again. Period, data value, parentheses, bracket, and then I'll put one comma true index just like my bars layer. Now you can see that the text changed to show what's in my sheet for that row and that column. I'm also going to go back into my bars layer and just copy that exposition property. Go back into numbers, separate the dimensions for position in my text layer, and then paste the exposition expression. I want to make sure that my text is lining up with my bars, so instead of going back and forth and back and forth between two comps, I'm going to click on my viewer and then go into view, new viewer so I can preview two comps at once. And I'm gonna open comp one, and I'm gonna click this lock icon so it stays there. Okay, so it's clearly not lined up, so let me go back into my numbers comp, and I need to adjust some things. So first, you need to make sure that the text box is as small as possible, like this. And then I'll also center my anchor point. So now it looks centered on my bar, but it's still a little too high, so I might have to make a few adjustments. Okay, looks good. So now that that's all set, it's time to duplicate the heck out of this layer using Control or Command D. I also wanna animate this, so I'm gonna add some keyframes to my Y position as well.
So now I can close out of this numbers viewer and unlock my comp one viewer. Now my numbers are coming off the bars with the animation I did, so an easy fix to that is add a set mat effect to my numbers layer. And I'm going to set the matte layer to my bars layer. Now the numbers only show on my bars. To add my dates, I'm going to simply go into the project panel and duplicate using control or command D uh, my numbers comp. And I'm going to rename it years. So go into the years comp and open the source text in the top layer. So since my years are in column zero, all I need to do is change my one to a zero here for when I reference which column I want. Now copy the source text, select every layer and paste. Doesn't get any easier than that. So I'm gonna delete my Y position keyframes and just do a simple opacity animation instead. So I'm going to select all, make sure my anchor point is centered by pressing control or command and double clicking my anchor point tool, and then change the rotation of my dates. Now all that's left to do is add a title, and there you have it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be making some more After Effects tutorials soon.